So right now I'm in RevMan Web, if some of you have used it before. Um, and basically what I'm going to do is what I really want from RevMan Web or whatever software application, I really just want the data about from the meta analyses here. And uh, if I just go into the analyses here, we've I already have my statistical analysis for this probiotics versus placebo. And I have a variety of outcomes where I was able to do a statistical analysis. And we will focus on this first one where we had six studies, etc. And we have all of this data. And I have a forest plot. I have a pooled result here. And that's the statistical analysis. One thing to note, though, is if you don't, if you had to do a narrative synthesis, we won't have that data, obviously, here. Um, so that's just to note for later. Okay. The other part is here, if you're doing a Cochrane review on RevMan Web, you'll have this section just along the left-hand side for the summary of findings table. Um, basically, I, I have nothing in here right now, and I want to add a summary of findings table. So and I'm going to use Grade Pro to do that. We'll show you later how you might do, not use Grade Pro, but we will use Grade Pro to do that. Um, I'm going to log into my account. It's all going to uh, work uh, hopefully seamlessly as we are showing it uh, live. And... I'll just accept that. Um, and I'm just going to connect, you know, log into my account. And it will ask me whether I'm going to import my data. And that's exactly what I want from the from Review Manager web, RevMan web. I do want that data to come in automatically. So if I have it, that's fantastic. And we'll load that up. So right now, we have the data from RevMan Web that went automatically into Cochrane, um, uh, the Gray Pro software. You can see that I had those four outcomes that I showed you earlier, and it's pulled in some data from it. Um, and we need, to, at this point, we need to fix this up. And we also need here to do our certainty of evidence, our grade assessment. Um, so what we'll do is let's look at the first one. This one's going to be the number of participants who experienced an infection. And you'll see some of this data here. What I'll show you is that for each of these, and you can see the risk ratio is 0 0.71. If I can do this quite quickly, I will flip back to RevMan just to show you that this is the data that I pulled out. So it did pull out the 0 0.71. We also have the total number of participants and the six studies. And if I can, I will flip back to Grade Pro. And you'll see that I have the six studies and the number of participants. The other details that I have also pulled in is information from the forest plot. If I click on this, it's pulled in the number of people who had an infection out of the total number of people. And that comes right from the forest plot. So I know I'm flipping back and forth here. I hope I'm uh, not doing that too quickly. But you can see here, these are these numbers here that they've just pulled out, it's, uh, directly putting it in. 179 of the 774, 128 of the 764. And we'll see that here. There's that one for risk with no probiotics, that's our control group. And then with the risk with probiotics, I've also pulled in those numbers. So I hope that's clear. There's really nothing that Grade Pro has done automatically to do different calculations. It's really just pulled in those, um, those raw numbers. What it has done though, it has calculated what your risk is and you can see here, risk with no probiotics, it's just giving us some numbers here, 231 per thousand, 164 per thousand. That number, oops, that number here is basically 179 divided by 774, and that's your control risk right there. 
as we start to fill in our table, we may want to not be putting in these exact numbers here. We might not want to show 23.1% as the average risk. We might decide that we want in, in our um, other data that we might have from observational studies or um, data that we have from the randomized control trials, we might wanna show some different risks. So we may decide that actually, instead of showing an average, we might wanna show a median type risk or a, a moderate risk. And we might wanna uh, calculate something different for that. For me, when I'm making tables, I usually prefer not necessarily to use this 23.1. I usually try to round those numbers a little bit, and perhaps I might just put in 25% to make it easier for readers. And what I'll do is I'll just show this one. I'll unclick that one and then show that right there. The other thing that I like to do when I'm making summary findings tables is sometimes it's worth having it out of a thousand because they're very small numbers. But generally, especially for Cochrane reviews, I do prefer to put it out of a hundred. And this is totally up to you and what you would like to do. Um, so you can change the numbers. If you're working on more of a public health intervention, you might decide to put it under of a hundred out of a hundred thousand or even out of a million. So totally up to you. It will ask me, do you want to show it out of 100 for all of your outcomes? And me, I'd like to be consistent. So yes, I'm going to show all of these numbers out of 100. The other thing that's now been done, I've chosen a baseline risk. The Grade Pro does automatically calculate what that baseline risk is when you actually receive the intervention. So this is this number right here, risk with probiotics. If you do the calculation, you will actually see that 25 times 0 0.71 is 18. And that's basically a straight calculation that's done for you. And you can use that. Um, and it's really just based on that risk ratio there. I'm happy with these numbers that I'm presenting right now. Um, if you wanted to, as I said before, you might decide that you wanna show a low and a high risk. And based on the randomized control trials, you could pull out low risk and high risk. And for example, it could be 10 and 30, and you don't wanna show the moderate risk and apply. And you'll see now that it's done some calculations on a low risk, and it's done a calculation on a high risk. But again, this is totally up to you. And what's super, uh, super important also is you might want to indicate why you did those or why you chose those baseline risks. Um, a quick way to do that is if you right click on that field, um, you'll see that there's possibly the opportunity to put in an explanation. Um, I'll click on that. I'm going to put beside the low. I'm going to right click on that. And I could put an exclamation here and add an exclamation saying um, low risk and high risk taken from baseline risks in the randomized control trials in the analysis. So we could do that, but very it's a very good idea to communicate with readers where those numbers actually came from. Okay, we need to start also focusing on the other information that we're providing to readers. Um, in this case, the number of participants and the number of studies is brought in. Grade Pro doesn't know what type of studies those are, so I'm just gonna click on that and I'm going to enter in that it's randomized. But before I do that, just wanted to point out that if you happen to be doing a review with non-randomized studies, observational studies, um, you have you should fill that in. In this case, we do have randomized controlled trials, and I'll apply that. The other thing that you might want to change is making sure, because many of many times when we do um, research, we a lot of times we'll have outcomes that are written in a very um, uh, non or a very scientific way that may not be understood. Um, we, you know, for me, I might just kind of take out that to clean it up. Um, I would say maybe infections as a short name. 
Um, this necessarily wasn't measured in a specific way, um, but I might want to indicate that the range of follow-up across the studies was maybe six to 12 months. And of course, that'll be based on what you found in your studies and just add that information for readers. So right now, we just have a little bit of information in. We haven't got to the grade process yet. Um, just want to make sure if there's any questions so far that we've had that might be a good idea to answer now before we go ahead. And Dario, I'll, I'll ask right. you if there's anything. Yeah. Right. Uh, we did have questions, uh, some questions. And uh, uh, and also we have actually uh, 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 some experts in, in the audience. Great. Uh, people from uh, uh, Great Pro and RevMan. And they are providing answers, and I will read them out uh, for the benefit of uh, viewers of this recording. So the question was, is there any way to transfer your data from Revman Web if you can't integrate GradePro? And uh, Gert has answered that, yes, you can export a data package with which GradePro GDT can import. Um, and Sean has provided, and Gert has provided some links to GradePro and Revman knowledge bases where more details is provided. Um, also, we had a question, are we able to import this data directly from softwares other than RevMan? And then uh, Justina have uh, uh, answered that currently Great Pro can import data from RevMan web, either online or through exported file packages, which uh, you or Bakhtiar may uh, mention uh, later on. Uh, so these can be imported uh, from old RevMan 5 files and from old desktop great profiles. Otherwise, the data needs to be entered manually, although it never takes too much time as tables are semi-automatic and make data input easy. And Gert and, and has noted... Mm -hmm, go ahead. Dario, I might just say that I'll just quickly show how people can can create that data also. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I can do that later. Yeah. Um, and Gerd just said that it's worth noting the new RevMan export is basically just CSV files. So in principle, you could produce them from other tools, but you have to be very accurate in following the format. Mm -hmm. And again, there's a um, knowledge base, RevMan knowledge base page on that. Uh, we also have some questions that you might answer. So uh, Nancy, why it is not recommendable to write the percentages in the risk box? Um, I'm trying to understand. So I might put this here. Um, I mean, uh, just to, to maybe say again, it is, it really is whatever percentage you or want. Um, I guess, you know, we're putting it out of a hundred. Um, there are, and this is a, maybe a good point to show that there are other tables that we could show. This is the table that's coming from the summary findings table that is imported into Cochrane RevMan. Right now, I'll show you if you wanted to create a different type of table, which might have percentages, for example, I think it's summary findings. There's all these different versions of tables that you can create. So I think version three in the summary findings table has percentages. If that's maybe what you think that your decision makers would rather see is percentages. The other thing in this table is it has the risk with uh, probiotics, with probiotics, and has calculated the difference. So that's a different uh, type of table. And that was version three. And then we also have uh, grade profiles, which goes back to the question we had earlier about showing a lot of details. So there are a lot of details in this table, the event rates in each of the groups, but in particular is we're, we'll see a very long version of the grade assessment in this grade evidence profile, where you, we will actually, in this table, it will show exactly what we decided for each domain of grade. Whereas if we go back to our summary of findings table, We'll see that in this type of table, we just show the overall result. We don't show the details, but I'll show that again. So there are multiple tables and it's just the square right here that you can follow. Great. Okay. So uh, next question, how are continuous variable effects presented, especially quality of life results? 
Yes. And then, so yeah. we'll focus on the dichotomous for now, which is the number of participants. Just under that, I'll show an example of what we do with continuous outcomes. So I'll get to that. 